To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. This, this is a Super Tools course, and this is a Super Tool. Now, when you reference, you want to have the referencing be immediate. You want, it, you want one touch referencing. You don't want to listen to your track and then open up Spotify and then find the track and scroll to the chorus and hit play and listen and then close Spotify, go back to your track and hit listen or go to your kitchen and listen or plug in two analog cables and then switch things. All those little steps take out, the, take away the power of one touch AB referencing. So back in the day, um, before uh, metric AB, I had a cool way that I used to do in Cubase where I used the Q sends. And I'm not going to show it now, but I'll show it in the Cubase user group. You can use these Q sends and you can use this Q and you can one touch reference here. And that's fine, but it doesn't have all of the crazy built in power of metric AB. So we love it, metric AB. Where do we put it? Well, you want to put it last, right? You want to put it, at, if you have a, a mix bus or a master bus, depending on you know, what you're doing, you want it to be the last plugin. So in Cubase, we have this thing called Control Room, and it gives us all these different capabilities of monitoring things and switching between sources and dimming things. And we can put plugins on our Control Room or our monitoring metering so you're not worried that meters are going to go through. Um, your sound's going to go through meters when you render, or that if you have, uh, for example, I have my room correction here on my uh, monitor, so it's not, when I render something, it, it doesn't go through my room correction, because you, you would want to bypass this, but I don't even have to remember to do that. So I can throw all these cool inserts and plugins on my monitor section, and it doesn't bother my rendering. So here is Metric AB, and it is uh, the first insert on my monitoring section. And uh, I created a key command that I stole from Logic, and I put it in Cubase, which I use the letter V, which show hides big plugins. So you can see big plugins big, and if I hit the letter V, I can hide it, see the arrangement, and snap back on me. So uh, in, in whatever DAW you have, this is a handy one because... Plugins are getting bigger, which is good, because then you can see better. Um, but sometimes you want to get them out of the way, and this is a slick little workflow. Create a key command to show and hide a plugin. So when when we the, here's the one touch referencing. When we're in A, we're listening to uh, our our track or Scott's track or the track we're working on, and B is the reference. Now down here in this section, you can load up up to. 16 different reference tracks and to load up a reference track you click here on this little hamburger as they call it and you can load an audio file and i can go to all of my reference tracks here and i can find a uh, dead mouse 5 no, i'm just kidding let's say i want dead mouse yes you can drag and drop as well hakan is correct and you can even select eight tracks at once and dr drop them in and they'll go all go to the different slots Huh, fancy. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, right? Because if you reference the drop and you, you AB it with like some kind of build or an intro, it doesn't really help you. So what you want to do is you want to go to your reference, uh, to the track you're working on rather, and you want to kind of loop the drop or the chorus, the most climactic moment with the most instrumentation, the loudest, most exciting part, and you don't have to loop it perfectly, but now if we play this, we'll have our our drop, uh, two main drops here. We'll go to the second drop. We also want to identify the drop here so that when we switch between them, we're switching on the drops. So the way you do that is you go to, um, the, you have different playback modes, latch mode, cue mode, sync mode, manual mode, and they, they're all for different purposes. But what we want to do is we want to go to Q mode. And so in Q mode, every time we switch between the A, B, um, it's going to start it at the drop. So we go to Q mode, and then we hit the number one 
we have up to four different cues. Now we probably also want to loop the drop. So we're going to click loop mode and then it gives us this loop marker. And to, to scroll into the waveform, you can do a two finger scroll. And it, the, the looping doesn't have to be perfect. If you're crazy particular about it, you can play with this. Now, as a updated feature here, I wish that they made a little bars and beats grid mode. So I could put in the tempo and then grid this so that I could like snap it to the one. I would love this, but they don't have it yet, but that's okay. You know, uh, not the biggest problem. So we can sort of play with this loop here and we can slide it around so it's looping nicely. Now watch what happens if I switch between them, you will we'll be switching drop for drop. Okay, we're getting closer and this is getting to be better referencing, but the problem is now is that this reference track is mastered and and Scott's track is not mastered. So this is not helpful. This is blowing me out of the water every time I switch and making me feel like there's something wrong. But in fact, there's nothing wrong except for a huge level difference. So what they have here is this little match loudness button down here, this little match thing. So what happens is you go to B, you hit play and you, it will, it will actually match for you. And it just matched like that. Is it perfect? No. Is it pretty good? Yep. It's pretty good. Minus 10.4 dB is what it thinks it needs to do to make a smooth switch. So now we can switch. So, so now up here as well, there's a master switch. Don't use this one because this will actually control the volume. See, I can pull this down here too. But the problem with doing that is um, that any of my B references then will have this value and that's not what I want. I want each one to have its own value. So you see, if I go to the other Enrico, it's still at Unity. But this one, we have corrected both with our little AI thing. I don't know if that's even AI. I guess it's sort of. But I mean, our little auto uh, matching, and then we touched it up ourselves with the human thing. Okay, so now, now we can AB reference, right? Yay, it took a minute. Uh, so now we can do this. So now we have up top here, all these different modules. One is playback mode. That's what we're in now. And it has some interesting things that we'll get to. The second one is a uh, frequency spectrum analyzer. And there's lots of different ways to configure the way you look at things. The next one is a, uh, a correlation, phase correlation um, meter that shows you by frequency. So you can see what the phase correlation is between the different sections of the sound um, by frequency. Here we have a stereo image uh, meter that shows us also width in a dynamic sense, also by frequency, and there's lots of different ways to look at that. Here is the dynamics module. This is the best one. I, I don't know if we'll get to it today, I promise I'll continue with Metric AB on Tuesday because it's such a great super tool. And this is an update to this class. And I want it to be the Bible of Metric AB. No, that's too, that's a little heavy, but, but, it, but, but to be a really good reference for you because there's quite a bit. To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com.